our final time here this year, this spot turns into an icicle where the water drops down the rock face. So I'm going to check every crack and crevice, even cheating a little bit, sticking a little cheap camera down into the cracks to see if I'm missing any crystals. We've checked out that old pocket that was in the last video. I found a few stragglers, but we're back to that original spot where I hit it big. And we're going to investigate up in that top corner where I never got time to look at. And it is opening up, and it's opening up great. It's really weathered. It's easy to work through. I'm actually able to crumble out the quartz with my bare hand, just wobbling it out. And that top section is just full of plates of quartz. So I'm strategically moving them and trying to pull out the plates and keep nice specimens of multiple crystals on it. Like this one right here. And if the pocket's not a plate of quartz, it's filled with tons of terminated crystals. Check it out. I'm keeping every single one. Let me know if you're interested in getting a bag of them straight from the earth out of the Appalachian Mountains, 480 million years old. If you watch my other videos and you see roots going into a hard rock mountain face, there's a very good chance there might be a pocket there because it provides enough room for crystals to grow and those roots are going to follow those gaps in the rocks. Make sure to check out that spot first if you're out prospecting. As you can see, that compressed vein, that white part there, is going into some heavy crystallization with a big gap allowing bigger crystals to grow. This is great. I'm going to wobble another one out here. I'm going to work to the side of what I think is the main pocket. Check this out. It looks like a cluster, all terminated at each end. Look at that little thin one. See, the main pocket's to the left of my hand. At this point, I'm not concerned about cleaning them or getting the dirt off, because we'll do that later when I get home. It protects them on the ride. See, there's crystals falling out. Oh, this main pocket's going to be good. This is the biggest gap we've had so far at this spot, and I can't believe it. The last time I'm here digging it for the year. Look at that clarity. Make sure you hang in to the end because this gets epic. This was a great pocket and I took it all home, put it in a bucket, and I'm going to wash it later. We got some crystals to dig. Three, two, one. I knew that pocket was going to hit. Look at that. We got some size to some crystals now. Slightly a cluster too. Yes. That's a weird termination. Kind of like a skeletal growth. Ah, this is getting exciting. Look at the clarity of this pocket. Yes, this is what we're here for. Crystal clear.
Oh, this one's going to clean up so nice. That beautiful background of North Carolina. The more space we get, the better the striations, the form, the color, the inclusions get. I still haven't even touched that top shelf with the chlorite. I'm excited about that. I just have to clean out the bottom layer here. That allows me to pry out that top layer with all that chlorite and quartz crystals and see what's in it. So we got left-handed pockets and we got right-handed pockets. This is a left-handed pocket and I'm right-handed. Look at the colors up in there. All that chlorite clay and that gold hue. Man, the first pull from the upper ledge. Whoa, check out that clarity. And that green chlorite is still on the other side. Look how it penetrated into that clay. We're going to keep some of that clay too. So I'm reaching back as far as I possibly can with my left-handed ability, pulling out everything I can get on this last trip. And the inclusions got insane. The clarity got better, and I don't even know what some of these inclusions are. They have that green chlorite coating, some crystal clear terminated crystals on the side, and just inclusions all over the place. Then at the very back, I start popping out decent sized fluorite cubes, the largest I've encountered so far, and they are awesome. Two-tone color, which fits the prospect name, and it officially is now called the Two-Tone Prospect. And the awesome part is, the bigger piece even keys into that cluster, making one complete big cluster. I'm so happy I got into some North Carolina fluorite before old man Winter ran me off. But I do have one question, and it just bothers me. Why is the weathered fluorite purple? Makes no sense. But with all these gold, gold inclusions, gold colors, gold leaves, I just have gold, gold, gold on my mind right now. And I got some great information on some placer gold in the National Forest that's easily accessible for gold pan. So we're going to go check that out before we can't get in there anymore because of winter. Hopefully, we'll strike it rich. If not, I'm sure it'll be a great adventure. And if we got any left-handed subscribers, make sure to comment below. We're not done with this spot. Old Man Winter will let go eventually. But let's go get some gold.